Good afternoon, dear participants. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Thank you so much, Bharat, sir. I hope I am audible. <clears throat> dear participants, we are joined here today for a very special occasion and a very special program. Uh, today we are, are from the, on behalf of Galgotia's University Innovation Council, are here gathered today to discuss on, a, on the topic, entrepreneurship skills, attitude and behavior development. Dear students, it has been observed amongst the budding entrepreneurs that at, after some time that they lose hope and they, they try to move on to something else. Along with that, it has also been observed that people are having talent, they are interested, but somehow they are not motivated, they are unable to develop the attitude and behavior need, needed for a person to be an entrepreneur. Today, we are joined here for a small workshop on uh, entrepreneurship skill, attitude and behavior development. I welcome on behalf of the Galgotias University, our, um, uh, our guest here today, Dr. Himanshu Puri and Mr. Gautam Prakash. Students, I now welcome our first speaker of today, that's Dr. Himanshu Puri. Dr. Puri has a multifaceted career with an experience of over 12 years in EdTech, Legal Tech and Education sector. He is the chief consultant with Grab Guidance and EdTech Venture, which has created first of its Uber for education sector for providing one-to-one -one on demand sessions online for doubt sol solving in academic career and career domain. He is also associated with Legit Quest as a co-founder and CEO, raising $1.2 million in pre-series of funding round. He has worked with an edtech startup, Upgrad.com, in their early team, which is today a unicorn. He has also an experience in working with various universities and these schools, that's business schools. He is a doctorate in the area of management and holds a double master degree in commerce and business administration. Dear sir, we are delighted to have. So, and and would also, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, congratulate Galgotia University for holding such an important, uh, you know, uh, sort of session uh, for the, you know, uh, budding entrepreneurs, for the graduates, management graduates, and probably from so many uh, varied disciplines today uh, who are present, which is more than like 500 in number. And it will be uh, amazing, you know, experience for me to share whatever insights, you know, I have been able to collate in the last you know uh, six to seven years being present in this whole startup ecosystem so uh, just to start off you know uh, definitely you know I like very much you know wanting to focus on the theme of today's workshop because uh, you know uh, when you say entrepreneurship honestly uh, I mean it's it's not the cakewalk it's it's not the easy journey and when it comes to entrepreneurship, definitely those, uh, you know, uh, attitude that that is required, that is, you know, required to be an entrepreneur, the behavioral changes or the behavior that you need to carry to be an entrepreneur or a founder or a co-founder is absolutely important, is, is like, you know, the main thing because uh, like, you know, Mrs. Sharma started with, you know, like, you know, you could see a lot of failures in your life. You could see a lot of, uh, you know, ups and downs and most importantly, a lot of downs uh, in the whole journey. Only that your passion, your, you know, behavior, your, your attitude and your skill set would save you, would, would let you be, uh, you know, be in the journey and, you know, be a successful man later on. So yes, uh, definitely, you know, I have collated a couple of most important points that are probably needed for, for you to be focusing on, uh, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur, being a founder, and, and I'll, I'll take you through with them. Uh, 
and uh, you know you would not be a prize like you know whatever skill set the attitude uh, factors and all those behavioral things that i'll be talking about they are not new to you very honestly they will be like okay you have studied in your you know b schools you have studied in your uh, you know curriculum in your you know a lot many subjects and all but what important and the takeaway from this session would be not to focus on what because what you already know when i say you need to have a skill set uh, of you know uh, you need to be having a skill set of having a efficient communication i think you are all aware you need to be a good communicator to be successful in life whether you are in a corporate or and most importantly whether you are a founder so what probably you might already be knowing my emphasis here on this session would be totally on why and how so by why and how it means why it is this skill important for you to be an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur and how you could achieve that how you could attain that skill set is somewhere that you need to focus on so yes you might be knowing you have you are you know, you, you most of, of most of you are already you know uh, probably uh, you know into your graduation post graduation or maybe passed out or some faculty members so you might not you you might be knowing everything what kind of a skill set we have been talking about but my focus here would be on why and how of those skill sets because that is where everybody falls short we know it but how to implement it how to you know and why it is important when we understand the why that this is something important for me to be a founder then only i would go into the who how basically so so that's why uh, you know uh, uh, my 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 emphasis would be definitely on uh, you know uh, how and why so talking about you know the first skill set you know that any entrepreneur or founder is required to have is basically a problem solving mindset problem solver and all those things when you go for an interview you know the problem solver uh, when you want to enter into a corporate everybody wanting to have this kind of a problem solving uh, attitude or a skill set why this is the most important thing in in an entrepreneurship why it is most important for you to be a founder you need to have this kind of a skill set that you have to be a problem solver there's no other way around because when you talk about when you talk about entrepreneurship or you know starting your own venture today the venture you must have seen the ecosystem today the venture are focused on totally innovative product and services right talking about the examples like you know uber ola zomato swiggy we never thought of these kind of a ventures maybe you know 7 10 10 years back we never thought like you know somebody like a zomato will come up and you know the food delivery will be happening you know door to door and all those things we never thought by just click of a button the cab will be uh, you know arriving at your doorstep never so all the you know ventures that you see in the startup are innovative why they are innovative because those are based on a unique solution those are definitely coming up with with a mindset that you know it is trying to solve a particular problem right earlier something was not there earlier a guy was supposed to call a restaurant talk to him for 5 10 minutes discuss the you know order and you know take up a follow up on the call itself very tedious process to order a food right but that was a problem try and understand think from a founder's perspective when dipender goyal came into this he definitely thought it as a problem that why a guy is required to call a restaurant 10 times and make sure where he is where the delivery guy is and all those things so that is the problem and he focused on that problem and when he focused on that problem definitely he worked out on possible solutions and when you work out on possible solutions you start your venture and you come up with a minimum viable product which is an mvp a sort of a solution in the form of a product so that zomato app is a product which is trying to solve that problem you have to understand from that perspective here we are talking about that problem which is again not just been you know uh, experienced by one guy and it might be experienced by thousands lakhs and crores of people outside world right so that's where problem solving approach is the most crucial aspect you know uh, like mrs sharma introduced that you know i have been associated with you know grab guidance so 
so i'll tell you everybody is today aware of you know sort of edtech sector also i'll take you through with one more example i hope i have shared my screen and you would be able to see it also so everybody is very much aware of the edtech sector we are totally flooded with you know uh, online courses you know recorded courses lot of uh, you know big sharks like you know byju's and vedantu solving out the offline tuition to the online tuition but again there are certain problems so like grab guidance is focusing on a very unique problem there are like you know one fourth you know one out of four people taking the online tuitions so vedant for vedantu 25% of the audience is basically the people who want to take the tuition but we are focusing on the rest 75% there are people in the market who have a problem who can't afford a tuition at all in the tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities there is no concept of tuitions honestly people still have doubts people still have problems so that's why we created a portal and where we can connect one on one a teacher and a student for solving the doubts on a real time basis very simply you know if you see if i am a 10th class student and i want to get connected with any maths teacher i'll select 10th i'll select maths and here i go i get you know access to all the teachers which are brilliant possibly you know and if in case i select anyone definitely i get an option to get connected for like 20 minutes in just cost of 170 rupees so that's a unique proposition if you are thinking of getting into a sector which is already for an example you know saturated you have to think innovatively you have to think like you know uh, is it like a problem uh, you know which is there in the market and i need to tackle it differently i mean something which is already existing in the market can also be your product can also be your service but again then you need to understand how i can do it differently so problem solving mindset is not a small thing it's not that okay there is a problem okay everybody needs food let me come up with a restaurant i would say that is not a startup right that's a business that's a old school business i hope you got the difference so when we talk of startup it has to be tackle it in a very innovative way very different solution that is actually taking up a problem which is a real problem in the market so so that's that's one uh, you know sort of skill which is uh, utmost important i would say another thing now moving on to the second part you know uh, which is the leadership again we have been bombarded with this leadership kind of a gyan in a, almost every of the session probably in your every of the textbook right but honestly uh, you know i'll i'll give you a different school of thought here uh, very honestly i i was not a leader i'll i'll be not shying away from accepting this fact that uh, you know i was not born as a leader i was not a leader at all i have worked in corporates i have worked with uh, you know education sector as an employee right but possibly there are two things you can develop that kind of a skill set and an attitude or you you are born with it possibly right if you are born with it amazing then you know you will have a more inclination towards more risk taking things like you know starting your venture and being a founder and a you know and all those things right but if in case you still don't feel as of now that i i don't have a leadership skills you know i i i don't consider myself as a leader but you can develop that kind of a skill set i i am seriously telling you this is basis coming all the experience that i carry you can really work out on all these skill sets if the prop you your you know mindset is not problem solving get into those new startups understand how they are you know tackling it how they are coming up with the innovative solution read more about that particular domain and you can get into that skill set very easily obviously it will take some effort why i say easily is just because you can do it right so similarly if you don't feel yourself as a leader don't shy away from this startup ecosystem if you are wanting to have your own business wanting to have your own venture and you are seriously inclined towards making a difference in any sector or anyone's life go ahead forget about those skill sets that you don't carry you will evaluate your own journey and you will start learning from your own journey and you will enhance those skill set during that journey itself so coming on to the leadership why it is important again you know what what to pata hai leadership hum sabko pata hai there is no add on gyan 
but topic talking about why it is needed i think again most of you must have already understood because when you talk yourself as a founder it means you are leading the it might be starting with patient so for, from whose you know mindset that unique solution has come up you yourself has to lead that i mean there can't be a replacement of you honestly in the very beginning right so if you see you know uh, any investment also happens that investment happens on the basis of the founder only you know because you are the only one who came up with this you know idea and you are the only one who can really run it through also it's not that you know uh, i mean you just set it up for 2 3 months and now somebody else can take it up it's very difficult it's pos- i mean it's it's actually not possible kind of a situation you know because because if you have nurtured a venture nobody can run like the way you can do it right so similarly again coming on to this leadership part yes uh, you have to act as a leader why because obviously you have to lead the organization it's your brain child it's your baby and at the end you have to develop the whole team and run the team right you can't just delegate and and honestly when when you start off when you start off with a new venture uh i mean it might be two three people but the effort that is, it is needed at the very beginning at the very early stage is humongous so there even you know uh, you might not be you know required to delegate more but act as a leader more right so 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 there i mean leadership is very important i i would say most importantly down the line when you scale it up to 100 it's it's not easy it's not easy at all right now you know uh, i'm i'm leading an organization which is now almost 100 plus right and funded by the external invest so so it's not easy and today you know you are managing a team which is working from all across india and you have to like take care of their you know fulfillment of their objectives their targets and their you know work you know deliverables everything uh, virtually so yes uh, you have to have that kind of a you know uh, attitude in you and if in case you don't have it don't worry at all you will grab it during the whole journey i'm seriously telling you that's that's nothing to worry about uh moving on to the third most important you know uh skill set again uh i think you must be familiar about the communication part you know when it comes to uh, you know running a organization when it comes to being a professional working in, even in a corporate you need communication skills everybody knows that but how it is the most important thing uh, required for for you as a founder is again you need to understand because you know uh, when it comes to again you being a founder you know in the very beginning i'll take an example here from a startup ecosystem only suppose you have an idea right and when you have an idea you have to develop a product around it being a you know founder you might be expert in one or two area only right for instance you are not a tech guy you are a business guy right and uh, Uh, and and definitely you need a technology team suppose you are working on a you know tech product which is a website or a application then you have to like communicate that product idea to your product team or a technology team because at the end you can't code you can't you know create a website you can't you know develop an app you need a app developer you need a website developer it has to be a team effort again but tech guys has to you know understand what your product idea is and until unless they understand there will always be a mismatch what you are thinking of developing as a product and what they are actually building it so to solve that gap the communication definitely plays a major role because you as a founder needs to communicate very crystal clear your product idea and what you are actually looking for in your first product ki i want only one two and three features to be there or only one and two features to be there right you have to like very vo- have to be very vocal about your product have to be very clear about your product and that clarity has to be given to the product and the technology team until and unless that happens think of a you know product which is coming totally what you have not thought of i mean you wanting to have a you know 
product X, but product uh, team and technology team is building a Y. So, so completely shattered your, your, you know, your, your, uh, you know, complete passion will be like, you know, you'll be like sort of demotivated and, you know, and all those things. So communication is very important in the very early stage down the line, suppose you hire, you know, a couple of uh, marketing team also, and obviously you can't do everything. It's all about founder managing everything. Right. So, so if you have a marketing team, again, you need to be very clear what your, you know, objective is to get into the market. Either it is, you know, a, a branding, you want to just start off with the branding. You have a couple of money, you have some small, small investments, and you want to start creating a brand uh, uh, of your venture. And most importantly, it is majorly your revenue also at times because you are bootstrapped by bootstrap uh, for the benefit of audience. Let me explain. It's the organize, it's the startup, which is not funded. And it's being only run by the own money of the founders, or maybe next stage is the friends and family investment before any formal investment come. So when you are a bootstrap organization, honestly, you know, at that point in time, uh, your focus will also be like, you know, to generate revenue early on because you want to fund your expenses with your own revenues. And in that circumstances, you have to be very clear. Again, the communication has to be very clear to your marketing team what exactly you want from those marketing campaigns. If I'm running a paid campaign, yes, I want to run a paid campaign with this of a CTA call to action that people should book a, you know, sort of session with me, a book a, you know, slot with me, book a, you know, service with me, whatever it is as per your venture. So you need to be again as a communicator, very clear in communicating. Communicating is obviously verbal. So definitely the verbal communication I have been talking about. But again, if you talk about other verticals of the communication, like writing skills, those are also very important. I'll tell you, uh, you must have seen like a lot of, uh, you know, business uh, plan competition happens or, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you must be knowing about the pitch deck. So, so pitch deck is like, you know, a formal a document that you share to be written upon like pitch deck you need to have a pitch deck being created with a lot of you know uh, things that you want to convey it through words to your investors prospective investors to raise fund most importantly you have to probably are talking about a website to be created some content goes on the website and you might not have a you know a, a bandwidth of hiring a content guy separately because you have just started with a small amount of money, say four or five lakhs. You can't just have a team of content writer for writing content or you might outsource also. But honestly, when I launched my first website, I wrote the whole content myself. So I, if I wouldn't have that, you know, basic writing skill, I would have failed in at least, you know, <laughs> putting my website, uh, you know, live on the platform. Right. So think of those small, small things, you know, while creating that pitch deck, you need to have a clear communication of your venture idea to the investor in a PPT, right? Business plan. I have been talking about those business plan competition. You heard it. So business plan is needed to be jotted down on the paper today. It's like Microsoft word. So it has to be like jotted down for the clarity of the first few members, because when the business plan is there as a founder, you communicate that business plan among your team only. So those writing skills are very much important at these, these places for a founders, you know, very initial start. And uh, again, again, one more point when it comes to communication, you always talk of listening skills. Also, everybody have heard and why it is needed. Why I'll tell you uh, when you start your venture, when you have an adventure idea, it's very important for you to share that idea with maybe hundred of people. I'll suggest you to, Talk about that idea. If you carry that one to hundred of your network people and listen to them, because as a founder, we get biased. Honestly, we get biased and we only look at our thought process. We become very biased. Ki, okay. I have thought this, this will be the next revolutionary idea. That is the mindset. Every founder has it in a very initial stages, but that is also wrong. Why? Because if you talk about that idea, you might get a response out of, you know, say uh, seven out of 10 people saying this is rubbish. You might get that response. I don't know. I'm just talking about a hypothetical situation, but it might happen. Seven out of 10 people say it is rubbish. What are you talking about? Yeah. Right. So again, you, when you become a listener, 
you talk about your venture and listen about your venture idea from other people what is their response on it you get the reality check it might not be again talking about the situation which might not be that uh, extreme where you get a response like a rubbish idea and all but still out of 10 one nine might say okay yeah that that sounds good but one would be a smart guy who would who would provide you with a you know a, another dimension maybe which can actually change and you know change your idea to a better idea i'll take tell you an example of grab guidance only so when i was uh, you know uh, sort of uh, you know uh, you know brainstorming on this idea uh, in early 2020 so so you know i spoke to one of the digital uh, guy uh, he was a digital transformation expert right now he's in canada very experienced guy and you know when i was talking to him he gave me an altogether different idea because i was totally working on one thought process working on a career guidance aspect but he told me like you know the career guidance is probably you know uh, uh, has a very short life span by life span life span i mean you know probably you know career guidance might be needed in four times in anyone's life maybe at 10th 12th or graduation or post graduation for instance or the early stage of you know joining any corporate but academic is totally vast when you talk of the quantum of you know business that can come on the academic side is huge so he gave me that new dimension so when i spoke to him obviously you know it it i was not completely inflexible i was flexible enough to listen to him i was a good listener and that is how it impacted my whole venture idea and and, and i pivoted at very early stage okay let me not just work on this let me just add on this also because this makes a lot of sense right so similarly being a listener is why it is important you have understood and how it can really impact your idea your journey in the very early uh, stages of you being a founder has a lot of lot of you know impact so another thing is you know uh, i'll give you one more example uh, suppose you know you are pitching so by pitching i mean again you are probably sitting in front of investors and trying to raise say uh, you know 1 million us dollars so so again you can't be you know present yourself as a founder who just speaks because the people who are sitting in front of you are the you know people who have already you know passed on that stage who are already smart enough to understand your sector your business idea and at that point in time if they give you any feedback maybe you know if you are pitching for the first time you are meeting any investor for the first time if they give you a feedback you have to take it as a good listener and work on it obviously that's that's the later part but having said that because you can't have a debate there because i have thought this is how it's going to be it's my product you can't be like that you have to act as because they come up with a very very rigorous experience they know it most of them they are from that background possibly and they know it better than you and that is how if they give you any feedback that's again very critical because any investment round doesn't get close in the very first pitch you might be required to like pitch into hundreds of investors maybe and then you get to a stage where you are funded so it's not easy journey again so being a good listener is again very important so 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 communication was the third part so just to summarize you know uh, i have spoken about problem solving mindset and how you can come up with a innovative solution on that is somewhere you have to figure it out if you are thinking of a venture getting into a startup second we discussed about uh, uh, you know uh, just a second second we discussed about leadership yes uh, that's that's another most critical factor and the third one we talked about the communication although they sound very simple terms problem solving but you understood the context uh, into this startup ecosystem the context for a founder when he's uh, you know having his you know uh, new venture being created and why it is important how you have to like actually go through with it so that you are you know uh, doing the right stuff at the right time for your startup right coming on to the fourth part uh, fourth one you know um i'll talk about uh, another most important which is uh, perseverance i'm 
you know i think this point might be a new terminology for a lot of people but just to uh, drill it down and you know keep it simple so perseverance is basically you are sort of persistent uh persistent again very much you know sounding like term with consistent so consistent means you are stable all the time but persistent means you are on to that always you are very determined on to what you want to do so perse- perseverance comes from there that you are very determined and persistent to what you really want to do and that is the most important again skill set one of the most important skill set you need as a founder because if you are not persistent if you are not determined if you are not sticking to what you want to i think then entrepreneurship is not a cup of your tea because if you are thinking that okay in today's world by looking at these byju's vedantu ola uber zomato you think that it is the most easiest thing you can just start off and you can next year raise a fund and and all those things so i think i'll i'll, I'll break your myth here it's not that easy you have to be like persistent very much determined to be on your track and keep on changing your track also whenever it is needed and run it through long long years to reach at that stage you know today we know zomato just because it's been like more than 10 12 years now 10 years maybe more than 10 years right we know all these big big names because they started very early on right right so so it's not that you know when when we know that this company has come up there is no uh, hardship that you know their founders have done it they have their own journey i think i'll when i'm i've been taking the example of zomato i am i'm i'm pretty sure that very few of you or maybe none of you would be knowing that zomato was a was not zomato it was foodiebay.com i think now most of you must be knowing it uh, because it was i mean you could just read it on the google also so zomato was earlier foodie bay i mean they have their own hardships and journey you know dipinder goel pankaj chadda pankaj chadda you know four five years back left the company also as a ceo right only one founder is there right now which is dipinder goel who is one of the richest angel now uh, after they went for an ipo but you have to understand because they started with a small office in shahpur jet in delhi right a uh, 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 one you know room sort of office and you know from there it got started they must have pulled in their money you know they figured out a problem and i'll tell you what problem they figured out because you know they were like bachelors and they used to work uh, in one of the company in gurgaon consulting firm bain bain and company and you know they were friends and obviously you know uh, they were bachelors and they used to order food a lot and then when it came to themselves as a problem okay they have been struggling calling ordering so they found you know they found out as a solution to create a micro site which has all the brochures of the nearby restaurants that is how they started you know they just uh, scanned all the brochures that print outs those those used to come in the newspaper and all and created a micro website because one of them was a tech guy right and that is how they got a good response from their colleagues they they did it for their friends in the office which was a big company so they got a good response and that is how they started with a food directory company it wasn't a food delivery it was a food directory and it was a foodiebay.com then when they got funding and all so they rebranded and obviously zomato you know uh, rhyming it with tomato came as a brand for them but yeah and just one more example here uh uh i think i'll take the example of snap deal because uh, i am on to the point which is perseverance uh, kunal is the founder i mean uh, of snap deal right so snap deal was not a marketplace e-commerce platform i mean if you read out uh, snap deal started with a online you know sorry not the online even offline coupon book printing company there used to be coupons 10 years back of say nike 15% off some other brand 10% off so they used to collate deal with the merchants collate those coupons and print those books and those were the coupons which they used to sell for like 500 uh, you know 1000 rupees per copy having 50 coupons right then they figured out that this is a biggest problem that carrying a coupon book is the most difficult thing nobody does it so they jumped on to uh, creating the sms coupon so you must be remembering there used to be sms coupon 15% off on so and so brand because sms is still convenient 
because it is virtual and can be easily carried out uh, uh, carried uh, you know on a mobile and shown to the merchant for a discount and all then that also failed you know they did not get a good response then they moved on to uh, you know cards coupon cards like a credit card they used to have a discount cards and that discount card was the third pivot so pivot by by pivot let me just for the uh, you know benefit of audience again and this you know tell you the uh, this meaning of the pivot pivot means changing your track in a very layman's term changing your business idea tweaking your business idea because the earlier stuff was not working so that's why you tweak your business ideas what is known as pivoting in a startup ecosystem so so when the coupon books did not work because they were bulky nobody used to carry them they jumped on to sms coupon but then they find you know sms coupon is again you know sort of uh, not working out for them because as per their estimate and expectation they used to you know uh, give it for free in the beginning when they started monetizing nobody was paying for it and then they thought of discount cards so in during that time when they launched discount card corporates were the most uh, you know uh, critical tg target group for them and i mean they got a little success there on the discount cards so third pivot actually made them a little bit successful there and then they got a funding of 2 million from clary on the basis of not those discount copies uh, the hard copies of the coupons not just with the sms it was basis the discount cards which they used to uh, they used to sell it to the corporates because corporates may employees could discounts milte the and all those things so then they got the first funding after such a rigorous rigorous kind of a you know pivoting they did it and uh, they have been working in you know kunal was working in us and he shifted india and all those things with and and the journey was not simple so they were very persistent ki okay we have started something you know we saw a cup you know this opportunity in us let's stick to it it may be you know requiring certain tweaks basis the indian audience because the idea they thought was actually a us idea because he was working in us so he came he came with this idea from us but any idea working in us will not most probably work in india because india is a very different market and that is how it took him couple of pivots to actually get a bit of a success and and if if he wouldn't have been persistent and you know he wouldn't have this skill of being having a perseverance in his you know attitude he wouldn't have created snap deal now i mean again you will say okay i've been talking about discount uh, you know uh, cards but again they after even successful uh, they obviously they were visionaries honestly again visionaries one another you know quality that is being needed so when they were visionary obviously they thought okay i mean this is fine this is working but what next i mean we need to keep on jumping on to the larger larger space so they then created snapdeal as a brand and snapdeal still was not a marketplace it was a, a online discount coupon website like groupon and all those things which still exist today snapdeal was also a online coupon company so they used to have a website now snapdeal.com but they used to not sell the products they used to sell the coupons discount coupons you know you subscribe and you get 100 coupons of various brands and all those things but again uh, that was not sufficient enough they got the business online and all those thing from offline to sms to discount cards to online and then when they i mean once they went to china kunal and rohit they were the founders and they saw alibaba and from there they got okay i am just giving a 15% discount on nike why can't i have a nike product on my website itself why am selling you know uh, nike ka coupon why not just nike so then from there he saw the growth of alibaba and you know and then he got into the marketplace which is the biggest success ever which we know uh, along with flipkart amazon being another big players and snapdeal is the another one so that is how i mean with their journey i just wanted to tell you that if you are not persistent you don't have that perseverance in your you know uh, uh, you know uh, attitude i think don't go ahead with your uh, you know uh, venture idea because it will be a hard journey things i mean it would be fabulous if if it works out on the very first go but uh, i mean tell i'll tell you very honestly nothing is perfect in the first go even i would have thought of something to be perfect it might not turned out to be that way right it i have even we are changing lot of things our marketing strategy gets changed every day 
वी हैव टू टेस्ट इट आउट वी कॉल इट एज ए बी टेस्टिंग ये भी आपने कई लोगों ने सुना होगा सो यू टेस्ट इट आउट एक मैसेज डाला मार्केटिंग का और दूसरा भी डाला देखा कौन सा बेटर काम कर रहा है व्हाट एबी टेस्टिंग इज और जो काम कर रहा है वो करो इफ यू आर प्लानिंग टू वर्क ऑन थ्री प्रोडक्ट्स थ्री फीचर्स थ्री प्रोडक्ट्स विद इन दैट ओके एक काम नहीं करेगा दो करेगा वट एवर इट इज सो यू टेस्ट इट आउट राइट सो बट इट वोट बी हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑन द फर्स्ट गो यू माइट बी रिक्वायर्ड टू चेंज थिंग्स यू माइट बी रिक्वायर्ड टू चेंज ट्रैक एंड एट दी एंड इफ इट वर्क आउट till the time you get a success it's very very hard journey till that point right so so that's why perseverance is something that you might not be aware of but yeah it is uh, very much important i think uh, it must be clear by now uh moving on to another part uh ye bhi aap logo ne bahut suna hoga possibly sab log kehte hain you know uh, as a generic skill also uh, you, you you should be you know uh, uh, you know managing your time you should be prioritizing your things right now again it's a generic stuff but how and why it is so important in entrepreneurship i'll tell you right now um see uh when it comes to a bootstrap again coming on to a startup maybe you you know take your money from father you know friends family or you have your couple of savings you start with a small amount and you always have to be like cost optimized i mean you can't just have a big expenses being done on the very first day and even for first one year maybe for that matter right so during that time you know obviously you are very cost conscious It means yaar jo bhi kharchna hai kadam phook phook ke kharchna hai right because uh, that's what it is needed and there comes the importance of prioritizing right so i'm focusing on prioritizing first suppose you have a venture idea you know we also had a you know idea that you know we want to get into the k12 but getting into the k12 is a huge market so we restricted ourselves okay let's take small small steps let's prioritize let's just start with 8 to 12th or maybe you know if we are targeting the post graduate market which is mba and you know pgdm market you know we'll be just focusing on the management and commerce courses not you know maybe for instance medical and engineering for that matter so you have to like prioritize what to do and if in case you have a product idea in mind you might be thinking okay ye product mein main na ye panch cheeze dalunga i mean if these five things are there i think you know I'll, i'll break the market i'll just you know you need to spend on creating those five features or i was not having that bandwidth to even possibly spend for such a huge market because when it comes to k12 it's a huge market you need a uh, triple four times the marketing spends that you possibly can reduce it down by just focusing on a niche so obviously you would see lot of startups are started coming in the niche category you know you know just to take an example today we have like white hat junior or bio, you know kind of a venture who's now focusing on you know teaching you uh mu- giving you music classes but now i i was reading about a venture who's just uh you know who has just launched and raised a fund who's only into uh teaching you guitar right so th- that's there as a venture which is funded also but other startups who are big they are focusing on lot of okay yoga classes maybe okay guitar classes maybe piano classes and all those things but think of a venture that is also that has also started in a very niche category only guitar classes and that's there i'm giving you a factual information so and that's a funded startup right so so that's also have started happening why because everybody knows if i am going full on i would sp- you know end up spending a bomb it means i i have to have a huge huge you know uh, money to spend for marketing for product development for creating the team also on hr and everything that is possibly not possible you know that might not be possible in the very beginning for you so you have to be very very you know focused toward prioritizing what you need to do as a founder you might want to create a mercedes but start with a maruti you know uh and when i i must have used the word minimum viable product you know by just again for the benefit of audience minimum viable product is basically 
a product with which you hit the market a very basic kind of a product satisfying and solving the basic need that you have for c you know to solve out for your target group right so that's why i am comparing a mercedes with a maruti so if you are thinking of creating you know talking about your product as a mercedes don't jump on to creating that on the very first day right prioritize start with giving a basic feature what is the basic feature of a car moving a commuter from point a to point b maruti also does it mercedes also does it so i can't spend to create a mercedes right abhi wo meri brand bhi nahi bani hai mera us level ka product bhi nahi banega because i am very you know uh, small uh, and i have to fight with lot of big competitors right and every sector is crowded you know that tum health tech bolo ad tech bolo uh, you know uh, food tech bolo i mean every sector has so many startups you know so so that's the reality they have so many startups so you will have a competition coming in if your idea is innovative fair enough you will still have a indirect competition so that's what direct and indirect competition is right so 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 point being don't just jump on to creating everything you have to like prioritize you have to prioritize and come up with a product or a service that satisfy the target group ka basic need right and and that's why product development mein marketing mein sab mein prioritize karna padega ki kahan pe agar product develop bhi kar liya and you have again three products maybe in the very beginning with a very one one small small features as an mvp teen mein se main pehle kisko market karu prioritize because you might not have a funds to market all the things right kahan pe karu which platform should i do a paid marketing on google facebook or should i do a you know marketing to a b2b segment b2c segment lot many decisions will come on to you lot many product alag marketing alag team hiring alag prioritize the only solution is prioritize kehne ke liye aasan hai but jab karne pe aayegi mind my words guys this is the most difficult thing you have to act smart you have to be like uh, you know taking those decisions like so quickly churning out your decision so quickly uh isi pe ek aur philosophy let me just detour a bit and i'll tell you one more philosophy i was reading one of the you know article from uh, uh, one of the co founder and he was emphasizing uh, you know on on the aspect hire fast fire fast so i think again you must have understood very very uh, you know uh, self explanatory statement hire fast fire fast it means the founder today doesn't want to spend too much on thinking they want to take a quick decision they want to prioritize other things you know because product development or you know possibly marketing is the most critical part they don't want to spend much on hiring okay cv is there this guy sounds fine hire him if he founds to be good in just one interview hire him but yes if he is not productive in the one next month fire him simple so founder doesn't spend time if you are planning to even do a job in a startup be very clear you have to be productive on the very first day you can't get the training for 3 months like what happens in wipro tcs and all those you know companies which are very stable when you talk of startup you have to deliver from the very first day whether you are working there or you yourself a team member or founding team member or a early team member of that startup very important right so so that's another part uh, which i want to detour and talk about but yeah coming on to the uh, you know skills that we been focusing on so yes uh, priority and time management yes uh, obviously uh, you as a founder in the very beginning uh, obviously uh, you know you have to look into everything everything means tumhe product pe bhi focus karna hai ki tech team product bana rahi hai theek se bana rahi hai nahi bana rahi hai marketing team theek se marketing kar rahi hai nahi kar rahi hai operations team okay service delivery ho rahi hai nahi ho rahi hai so again so time management is very simple again you have to like focus on each and every aspect of your business you can't just leave one aspect honestly customer you know uh, side pe hai to that becomes most critical because somebody is talking to your customer you need to be on the complete uh, top of the chart as to what is happening there right uh, product develop ho raha hai nahi ho raha if there is a delay it it completely hampers your planning budgeting everything cost side pe you know if you have a you know going forward you have a ca maybe you know who's advising you on the finance side you have to be very you know give time there also ki meri kitni cost ja rahi hai nahi ja rahi hai because 
if you have planned like one lakh rupees as a cost, and if it goes to like one twenty, you are shattered. Think that ways. You are not funded, right? So, so every place product me, ये बनना था एक महीने का delay है shattered. ये hire करना था बंदा नहीं मिल पा रहा market में नहीं जा पा रहे खत्म. So every small small aspect you have to take care of in the very beginning. You will not have the you know advantage of such experienced guys because you can't afford them possibly. So I'm actually talking about from a very very nascent stage, early stage startup. So if you have certain funds, maybe from friends and family, you can still afford a, you know, a, a you know, a sort of guy who can be your your co-founder or can be an early team member, taking care of a lot of important stuff, right? So that's that's a different scenario, right? So time management definitely yes, uh, most important part. Uh, another two three things I want to focus on is uh, one again networking, the the most important again from. Uh, you know startup perspective networking i mean you might not have given much emphasis on this aspect because or you couldn't even give in the last two years because you are like you know not going to your campuses or not going to your you know uh, offices and you are not you know socializing with the other people but, but honestly uh, networking is the core for a founder by core i mean to say because you know when somebody starts so i i gave you example you know when i was into the brainstorming stage you know i i needed some people to talk to them for sharing my idea right and with whom i gonna do that obviously i gonna do that with my network people and my network people who are possibly smart enough who are from that domain or who can you know who, who, who you know so i spoke to like 10 other co-founders i spoke to like you know couple of my investor friends you know who are into that you know investing uh, you know ecosystem and you know i spoke to couple of people and got into talking to real tg that we were catering to right so you have to have that network who can actually help you give you the valuable feedback so networking helps there when you are sort of brainstorming on your idea they will give you the feedback and then you know we we actually did a product survey so when i was doing a product survey you could understand i need people to give me the feedback on the product you know on the early time right again network comes into the picture another most important thing uh suppose you know you are a founder and and you feel that you know i i am possibly not good in particular area i might be needing a co-founder right and co-founder getting a co-founder is not a usual hiring i hope everybody understands that it's not that a kind of a thing which you put it on a nokri.com or indeed.com and you can uh, hire a co-founder right getting a co-founder is a very very different game altogether you know what happens is you know uh, because because when you are talking about person sharing your responsibility and taking a high level of risk as what you are taking getting that guy you could imagine is not simple right because everybody is not open to take that kind of a high risk right everybody is not open to contribute possibly capital wise also into your brain child idea maybe you know if you are talking about a co-founder you would want an experienced guy like yours suppose i today want someone you know i would not want a one or two year experience guy obviously i would want an experienced guy and to get that experienced guy i mean obviously his salary package he might be working in a corporate or some another venture he his his monetary expectation you would not be able to match and you could only get so you would have a first thought of having a co-founder as your friend right because he or she is at a at a st- same stage right but again you have to like you know you know uh, share that vision that you carry for that venture idea and convince him and he should be like on the same page as what you are and that's very difficult and very rare but it happens people people do that you must have seen lot of you know same stage and during their you know campuses you know conversations they talk about this and doing some changes in the you know sector and all those things and that happens right so so but yes having an experienced guy might be very difficult right and there again a uh, lot of tools comes into picture but yeah, yeah we will not talk, talk about that esops and equity sharing and all those things but yeah so we will we'll stick to the agenda but yeah again uh, coming on to the uh, core part yes uh, 
very much important networking will really help you get a co-founder also i hope you understood that point right uh, networking will help you get the first customer also we got our first customer from a known guy only so as simple as that so so when you have a new company with a new product it is very difficult to create a brand obviously you can't create a brand in just first couple of years it takes a lot of time right you so so to whom to sell you know you you will start obviously you will start selling to your nearby your nearby people the network people that you call it as right even if you get hired in an insurance sector the insurance guys will tell you to sell it to your relatives first the insurance product so similarly happens here they leverage on you know everybody leverages on the network for your own startup you have to do that you know you you'll approach the guys in your network who are your possible sort of you know um, uh, you know customers to whom you can really sell so we got our first customer you know uh, with uh, you know uh, who we were already knowing right and who i mean because they will be the one who will show the trust in the beginning otherwise it's very difficult to build that trust also you know brand is all about trust right i mean i today blindly buy a uh, hul product or a you know some branded product just because i i have a trust on that brand okay the quality going to be good but again that, that's not going to happen for a startup it takes a lot of time like any other corporate it takes a lot of time to create a brand so only thing that will help you to sell in the beginning to get your first customer is the trust factor and that trust guy, the the guy who going to do the trust on you will always be in your network possibly a close network or first degree network second degree network that also happens because if i find a guy who's in a need of a thing which i sell and he's a second degree guy and he's still getting you know getting to know me from that uh, mediator still it works out so so you have to leverage all your network you know all your people uh, whom you know and even ask them to spread across in their network right that works because because that's going to really help you get so many things like your first customer co-founders you know your early hires you know everything and uh, doing product survey product brainstorming venture brainstorming everything so network is the again core for a founder like i i started with that will be really really impactful um uh, another thing that i want to talk about two more small small things uh one is the negotiation part i mean again you know i, I in one of the point i was telling you that you know uh, being a bootstrapped organization you know uh, you have to be like very uh, you know uh, cost conscious right so so obviously you have to save every penny that you you can you really can you know so so because it's your hard earned money or your friends and families or your father's money possibly when you are starting off so so you have to be like a hard negotiator there is no uh, other alternative i would say i mean if you are still don't have those kind of humne uh, hr mein padha hai negotiator skill falana skill but i mean jab baithoge when you have like you know uh, say this much of amount in your pocket and you really need something in front of you and you have don't have that amount you will yourself negotiate badly because if you are so passionate about your venture you gonna negotiate there's no other alternative i'll tell you an example here so i was actually hiring a you know a guy and uh, it was a mid level uh, you know uh, mid level hiring uh, it wasn't a you know a senior hiring so somewhere you know uh, i i figured out a person and uh, her expectation was around 60000 a month and all all those things but i i i i after interacting and all those things i was so damn satisfied that i mean if she comes into my team you know so so i mean it can be a really beneficial outcome for my organization for my startup i was so damn you know sort of you you would say you know uh, determined and you know sort of satisfied with that candidate that i really wanted but we were bootstrapped we were bootstrapped and we had a friends and family round basically at that point in time so 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 yeah i had money but you know the budget we set we said okay we can't get a guy more than 40 a month my my pocket doesn't allow and i was not a negotiator again 
I, I didn't had not many skills which I have spoke today. But I today I say I have got a lot. You know, I have enhanced those. Uh, I have worked on those skills, and I have really got on to a stage where I can say today, if you want to negotiate with me, you'll find I'm I'm a hard negotiator. I am I'm sort of a leader and all those things. But yeah, I did not had that kind of a skill early on, and and you learn it through your journey, right? But I just in today's session, I'm just focusing on these skill sets so that you start working from today itself. Why to waste time? I mean, if I have you wasted two years to learn, I mean, you could just save it maybe by by being a little proactive on that maybe for that matter. Yeah. So so coming on to the point that I was making, the example I was taking. So uh, yes, so I was uh, very determined and very wanting to hire that candidate. But my budget did not allow. My budget was like forty thousand a month. I can hire, but at the end, you know, it was you know couple of meetings and rounds. It was required to sell our vision to her. You know, we we really sold our vision. You know, after like three years, this gonna be this venture at this stage. And then when the revenue comes in, obviously, you know, everybody earns the benefit out of it, and it it is the fact. obviously if you are you know getting a guy uh, at a lesser salary you are obliged to actually you know uh, fill that gap later on right and you do that by you know working together and taking your venture to the next level anyhow so yes uh, we had a couple of rounds of discussion you know uh, i i got her into my team and you know and, and she today is still there in my team and she she you know proved to be a amazing you know candidate and amazing employee for our organization and 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 that decision just came in through and that really happened because i negotiated hard at that point in time and then convinced her ki okay if you are losing something right now this gonna come with a huge return when we are raising a series a round right you will get a straight away double your salary for instance and we did that honestly work well, when we 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 got a early hire at a very lesser you know salary and when we raised a round we straight away doubled and tripled the everyone's salary because they worked it hard a lot founder doesn't mean that you get all the benefits right you have to like right and that is how you know uh, you know in the beginning being a hard negotiator has to be there as a skill you have to do it whether you 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 yourself believe that you are a negotiator or not but you have to act like that you have to crack a deal right even if you are going and selling it out you have to give it your 100% sell it at the price that makes sense for you and all those things so so that's how i say you know uh, at these these couple of stages selling to your tg you know hiring these negotiation plays a lot of lot of important role and again you know obviously negotiation happens with your vendors also so yes you want to save your cost all the vendors vendors i mean somebody is probably doing marketing for you or uh, you know taking care of your website or product or technology if they are the vendors you have to get them at the lowest cost possible you have to get them there's no other way around so 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 that's why you know uh, that's again one of the most important and uh, last uh, but not the least again uh, you being flexible is something which would be required because whatever examples i took in the last one one hour or so you know i mean it must be reflecting on like you know changing every day you know you might be required to change things every day also i talked about pivoting i mean you might have to change the whole track of the business i talked about the marketing strategies you might have to like you know change your marketing strategy every day if this one product campaign is not working on facebook okay shut it down run it on google not not working run it on linkedin not working do a you know a outside outbound sales calls maybe whatever it is right so so point is if you are not flexible and if you are like you know focused towards doing it and getting it success by any how on a particular thing that might waste a lot of energy money efforts right if i am like mad about you know running this strategy uh marketing strategy for my this product for two months that is not sensible and if it is not working after say five days if i'm monitoring that campaign you know that marketing strategy for my particular product if it is not working out well i mean let me just give it up let me just try it out something else 
because trial and errors in you know changing your strategies path now and then makes a lot of sense for any founder you can't just stick to one strategy and just try to prove it that it was right if you are of that mindset mind it you will waste a lot of money and at the end what happens is obviously you get demotivated uh, you get demoralized and you just start you know shutting it down things and you know you become a you know sort of an example of a startup failure right because at the end what happens is again 95% of the startups gets failed all because of these reasons all because of these reasons money is a very short reason i'm telling you money is a very small reason for a startup failure you can make it your way through the revenue very easily funding is not somewhere any founder should look at the first funding should come from your customer by customer i mean the first money should come from the revenue you make today i'll, I'll again give you just a detour here uh, to emphasize on this point we have startups like byju's who have raised billions of dollars we do have a startup like great learning which got obviously acquired now but great learning is also into the edtech and it was bootstrapped and heavily profit making organization till date till it got acquired it never raised the fund right and there are many such startups who never raised the funds and they focus on being the profitable organization and organically grow funding is basically an inorganic growth right so so point being here is like you know obviously examples are there but okay so so yes you should not be i mean focusing on you know this funding aspect more just focus on the other aspects be flexible be flexible in the sense okay fine so i have to like you know pivot i have to change my strategies now and then and and go by that logic right so yeah so i think uh, today i have covered lot of skill sets attitude that are required uh, i can probably if the you know uh, things allow i i can be open for any questions uh, by i'll just summarize before the questions that you know we we talk about we talked about leadership we talked about communication we talked about you know perseverance we talked about problem solving mindset being flexible you know being a hard negotiator managing time and prioritizing so so i think these were the terms sounding pretty easy but yeah how you gonna have it uh for your startup journey as a founder and why it is needed is somewhere i i uh, wanted to focus on and i think i did that uh, but any queries from anyone side i would be uh, happy to possibly take it up okay thank you so much sir yeah yeah it was a very uh, encouraging session that we had with you and i hope that our young entrepreneurs who have joined us here today are enthusiastically part of it uh, will get you know excited and at least they'll put in some effort from their side uh, so we have got certain questions you if permitted can i yeah, ask yeah absolutely absolutely uh, so we have a student uh, named as harshil agarwal he is i guess he is into aviation industry he is asking that how can i become an entrepreneur in aviation industry as i want to build my own airline oh, brand that's great that's great so you like i said i mean i, I could see the you know a visionary attitude coming from this guy so i'm i'm pretty impressed uh see definitely you know uh, you know you can you know you work on to the sector which is close to your heart or where your capability lies so i work for a sector because i i am i'm i'm probably probably knowing about that sector pretty well right so if you have the mindset and you have that you know uh, knowledge about the aviation sector that's great that's the first thing that that you need to take uh, always into the consideration so if i am the expert of edtech sector yes education sector is somewhere close to my heart i know that sector i can really get into the deeper now coming on to your question aviation you have selected now you have to understand the see starting a new airline is a somewhere you have mentioned that okay i want to do that so you have your product and services are there but what i will suggest here very strongly i will suggest here that you know uh, first of all you need to again understand the core problems that are being faced by a 
commuter who's using the airline services i mean why you are just concluding that i want to start a airline fir to theek hai khol do koi bhi khol do fir to i mean if you have the huge money with you because that's a most capital intensive business of running a airline but yeah point is just take a pause maybe you know the sector think it through what else can you do what are the real problems because i started with the problem solving mindset don't just jump onto the solution if you are jumping onto the solution that's not the correct approach understand what a commuter of airline services faces with lot of problem there can be lot of things luggage problems you might be solving on the airport think that way i'm right right now just you know talking aloud but think that way some other problem that a commuter of airline services faces you have to de- dig deeper because you have the knowledge of that sector and then come up to a possible solution right so so i'll just again show you one more aspect you know i'll just show you uh, again you know i when i run you know we we have also live courses so when i run this course you know uh, so so the first thing that i always focus on is origination of startup idea so if you see i mean first session is definitely talking about introduction but every entrepreneurship starts with an idea there are two possible things one the idea might be coming on from a personal pain point another the idea might be coming on from a rigorous you know demand supply gap or a rigorous market evaluation i'll give you an example here so i took i took an example of say uh, you know uh, dipender goel pankaj chadda bain company right it was their personal pain point bhavish agarwal ola he wanted to book a uh, you know a weekend trip so he launched ola trip it wasn't a ola cab it was ola trips and when he saw that the market is small for ola trips because trip happens once in a month maximum or maybe twice a year honestly so he pivoted to a urban commuter company through ola cabs right so so it comes from your personal pain points or it might be coming from your evaluation and rigorous analysis of the sector so another example free charge uh, i think i forgot the name of the founder bipin preet yeah i think it is bipin preet so he he want didn't want to do a, you know any corporate job he was iit pass out and all those things but again he was not facing any problem per se but he was totally you know focused toward analyzing a particular sector and he read okay so how does a guy at during those days used to recharge a mobile phone then he saw the solution a guy goes to a you know a, a customer goes to a market he buys a small coupon 16 digit he scratches through calls up puts then 16 number and that's it and then he launched the free charge because that was the problem and he made it very convenient solution for that why anyone is required to just you know get a card offline through a market so think that ways there are lot of opportunities in each and every sector by these examples i just wanted to tell you again re emphasize on my point just focus on what problems your prospective target group faces analyze those problem and how you can really solve it out is the solution i can't give you a answer right now a a kar lo b kar lo that's not a right approach you have to get into the sector rigorously i hope i answered it yeah thank you so much sir yeah. uh, so uh, yeah i hope harshal your query has been answered okay so we have uh, another question uh, from mr mr pastor he is asking that how is an educational startup is different from others like how is your educational Correct, correct. Okay, so that's that's targeted to the venture only. So, uh, you know, the problem. Okay, again, coming on to the basics of entrepreneurship. So, guys, you know, I've been always be talking about the problem. So, right now, the problem is basically, you know, the market is flooded with courses, the recorded courses. You have Upgrad, you have Simply Learn, you have Udemy, Udacity. You know, everybody is focusing on recorded courses, or maybe you know a subscription kind of a model. wherein you pay to buy juice vedantus and an academy for a particular you know month and all those things right but now like i 
I think I started with, you know, we are a on-demand educational services like a Uber, right? Suppose you are an MBA guy, right? You are an MBA guy and you have a Deloitte interview day after tomorrow, right? And you come up here and put in MBA and you have a Deloitte interview. So you select interview preparation and press on search. So you get 50 plus guys who are, who can really help you on an on-demand basis for preparing you for a Deloitte interview, right? So we have all these guys, right? So suppose uh, Amit, okay, he's a 25 year experienced guy in the area of marketing. Suppose it's a marketing interview, for example, although I took a Deloitte's example, maybe it's a, a HUL interview, right? And if you get connected at uh, 491 for 20 minutes, also say Saturday, he's available. You just pick and choose and book a slot with him, right? And why it is different? Because it is solving three of your problems. One, it is helping you find the right guy for you. It is helping you actually book a slot with this. And third, the online session also happens here only happens here only on our inbuilt platform on our inbuilt platform like this you know we have a lot of videos where the you know sessions happen like this right so 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 we are solving all the three problems so i'm uh, kishore sharing yeah. the screen so and... this is one on one session that happens honestly right so so we are solving all the three it's like we have created a zoom also a meet also within this where the live classes are happening so you need not to rely so urban pro is like it is solving two of the problem. Uh, somebody took a name of Urban Pro also. So Urban Pro is uh, doesn't have a proprietary uh, learning, uh, you know, uh, classroom system. We have it like a, you know, uh, like a Baiju's and Vedantu. Plus, that's a convenient way of booking a very 20 minute session. Suppose a maths class, uh, you know, a guy like I was taking an example, 75% of the people doesn't take tuition. That doesn't mean they don't have a problem. You know, they have a math exam day after tomorrow. And he want to have a connection with a math teacher like me, for example, for uh, two queries only. He can do that on Grab Guidance. So that's the problem, unique problem that we are solving. I hope I, I answered it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, there are actually a plenty more questions that have entered okay. the chat box. And uh, we have shared your uh, LinkedIn information because that was demanded by the uh, attendees again and again. And uh, I just hope that uh, when they will be able to connect with you, I hope they will be able to get the answers to their questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, obviously, I'm, I'm there on the Grab Guidance portal also. So anyone wanting to uh, speak to me, I'm always available there for sure. On a one-to-one -one interactive basis. <laughs> 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 just, uh, <laughs> that, yeah. that would be really awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, if the COVID situation would not have been, uh, uh, would not have been here, we would have loved to have you at our uh, you know, institution. And once the situation subsides, uh, we can humbly extend uh, the invitation. Uh, we are taking this opportunity to actually extend an invitation for your in-person conversation with our attendees at the university in the profile itself. Sure, sure. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I request Dr. Gaurav to please facilitate our speaker. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, such a valuable session. <clears throat> okay. So kindly, sir, I accept uh, our gratitude from the Galgotia University as a token of love, a memento for, of honor. Thank you so Thank much. You, sir. Sir. Thank you so Thank much, sir, for accepting our invitation also and to spare your precious time to motivate our young minds, student and faculty member. Thank you so much, sir, once again. My pleasure, sir, my pleasure. Thank you so much, Imanshu, sir. Uh, dear participants, we are now joined with our, with our next speaker for today's session. Mr. Gautam Prakash. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Very good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you so much for your invitation. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear participants, let me introduce our speaker for the session today. Dr. Go Mr. Gautam Prakash is currently working as a professor 
and a keynote speaker in various conferences and seminars across the country. Sir has a strong educational profile for from being a master of engineering from Pyagraj, uh, sorry, I'm unable to uh, pronounce it correctly, I guess. So uh, from the PC college in uh, Madurai, uh, he is a skilled person in networking, network administration, web applications, network security, and wireless networking. So is currently also a founder and director of the Seven Lancers Techno Park Pirate Limited. So is uh, currently also heading the operations head or department of the company also. We are delighted to have you, sir, with us today. And it would have been an honor to have you in person, but uh, uh, the COVID is not permitting us to do so. And I humbly request you, sir, to please address our audience. Yeah, uh, thanks for the nice introduction, ma'am. Uh, can I take the privilege of sharing my screen? Y yes, sir, you can yes. share, sir. Yes, sir, you can share your screen, sir. Yeah, I got it, got it, got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope my screen is visible. Can I can I start? Uh, yes, sir. Your screen is clearly visible yeah. to all of us. Yeah, fine. So, uh, very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a great time uh, to meet the future uh, future entrepreneurs of this nation. Yeah, I would like to appreciate the efforts of the uh, organizing team, especially uh, to arrange such a most inspiring topic to address. And uh, it is also my uh, sincere gratitude. Uh, to the team for inviting me as a guest speaker here today. Uh, so as you all know, my name is Gautam J. Prakash. I'm the Director and Operations Head of uh, V7 Lancers Technopark Private Limited, an IT firm in Tamil Nadu. It's, it's been a great honor to address this room as an emerging entrepreneur, and I hope this session could be an uh, I hope I opener for you people. So uh, yeah, let me get into the topic. And uh, before to start with, uh, let me just get to know one important thing from your people. Yeah, we have 499 participants here in this room. And uh, I would like to go with, throw with the uh, one important question uh, from your side. I think your chat box is open and uh, you can go with the answers. Who is an entrepreneur? According to you people, who is called as an entrepreneur? Uh, sir, if, uh, if, if you want, then uh, I can allow the participant to unmute themselves. Yes, you can also unmute. Yeah, people can unmute yourself and talk or uh, your chat box is always open. You can yes, just hit your chat answer. box is yeah. always open, sir. Uh, but a participant now can unmute themselves also. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, who brings up with a new idea? Yeah, fine. Sakshi, thank you. Thank you for your initiating point. Um, fine. So one who brings up with new ideas, he's called as an entrepreneur. Uh, any other answers from you people? Who is called as an entrepreneur? Who can you call as a, yeah, the one who knows to build a revenue model by solving a problem? Great, great answer. Solving a problem and bringing revenue to the company. Yeah, fine, great. Anyone who starts the new business by taking a risk, yeah, risk-taking persons are called as entrepreneurs. Arshad, it's really nice to see the answer. <laughs> it's really interesting as well. So taking risk is uh, are those who... Yeah. Yeah, who creates job for others? My God, the, the chat box is like, it's flooding with answers. Yeah, hope. I, I'll go with, I'll go with the part what I just want to convey. Uh, sometimes people would say the one who starts his own company to earn. No, it's not the right thing. The one who starts his own business, who does not like to work for others. No, he's not an entrepreneur. The one who loves to show his ability to the world through his business. I think uh, that's not the right thing. The one who undertakes the family business. No, 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 never, never. He's not an entrepreneur. Or the one who never sleeps, uh, never eats properly, never have a family time to spend, uh, have a family time to spend, and who is going to fully focus on business? He's called as an entrepreneur. 
No. Yeah, then who is an entrepreneur? Who is called as an entrepreneur? Yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Please uh, listen. The one who has a strong vision to implement his idea, his thoughts, and his passion, innovate something for the society, and be a good inspiration for the upcoming generation. So, but... But uh, you know that he cannot do this individually. He's not a person who can do this individually. He needs a powerful team with him to pursue his thoughts, to convert his dreams into actions and to make, a, uh, make his vision into, uh, say, a reality. So that is where he tends to start an organization with like-minded people to fulfill his dreams. So he's a passionate person who wants to inspire the world. So he's forming a team. He's forming a like-minded team and doing whatever he wants through a company. So he's not a dreamer. He's a doer. He's not a boss. He's a leader. He's not a duplicator. He's an innovator. Overall, yeah, he's an inspiration for you people. So he's an entrepreneur. It's, it's see, uh, you know, this is not just a word. Entrepreneur is not just a word. It involves, uh, say, uh, you can call it as a lifetime practice. It is a lifetime learning. And it's the ability to undertake any challenge. See, entrepreneurs, they are the people who always see the problem as challenges. They don't have, use the word problem. They usually see, the word pro see any problem as challenges. It involves a great competency, say, to, to handle the problems. And it needs a club of skills, uh, the accumulative skills to pursue and succeed what has been planned. Right? So, uh, yeah, I would never say entrepreneurship is tough. Do you people really think uh, this, this kind of job or entrepreneurship is tough? No. But, but it is never uh, called as tough. It's not at all tough, but it is a challenging part. But it's really challenge. Uh, it's a challenge which uh, which has to be faced with guts. You need a real guts to face it. The one who enjoys the journey of entrepreneurship can bring the best out of his success. He can bring any best out of his success. But you have to enjoy the journey of entrepreneurship. You have to face every single challenge with guts. You have to like like have the guts to break any challenge put in front of you. So uh, and usually people tend to say. I have heard many of them, many of the people, they tend to say, when you become an entrepreneur, you have to undergo a lot of stress. You have to uh, have a life which is completely stressful. Yeah, some people usually say this. I've heard it many times. Uh, so I've never, I, 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 don't, I don't know whether you have heard this sentence, but I usually hear this sentence from my relatives, from my family, my, from my friends, my well wishes. Everyone used to say this. When you become an entrepreneur, you have to face a stressful life. Yeah, I have one question for them. I just have only one question for them. When we were into our schools, when we were into our uh, colleges or schools, our parents have struggled a lot. You know, the maximum of you people are from, yeah, say, middle class family or uh, yeah, some, some people, uh, they still work daily to, to, to pursue whatever they want in their daily life. So ma maximum of your parents have, uh, say, struggled to pay our school fees or college fees. Even they, they, they struggled to manage the family expenses to pay the house rent. And you might have not even know uh, they have uh, faced some abusing words from the house owners to, uh, to pay rent. So they have to pay EMIs. They have to pay back the gold loans. Maximum of your people's gold will be in the bank when you have to repay it to uh, bring it back to your home, right? So they have such uh, problems. And they, they, that, that might be some sudden medical expenses as well. So I know few people, a few people of my friend's family, they could not even feed their hungry stomach uh, more than twice in a day. They could not even eat uh, properly more than twice in a day. But see the situation here, but they are never even uttered a word stress in front of their children. They, they are the real people who are facing the challenges but they have never even uttered the word stress in front of their children. Is there anything more than that? What we are going to face as an entrepreneur? No, not at all. When you see the problems as challenges in front of you, you would enjoy breaking the challenges and you won't feel the stress. So, so my dear children, please underline the word, underline the word and please keep it in your mind. 
when you are considering your you as an entrepreneur never never see the word or never ever utter the word stress or problem it's all it's all about challenges and it's all about how you are going to break the challenges right so it's very simple ignore the word stress and start exploring and break the challenges Yeah. This is what I have asked you. Who is an entrepreneur, and uh, he is a real agent behind uh, uh, whatever. See, uh, it is. Uh, it's not just a simple thing. It's state of. Uh, see, it involves lifelong learning. It's something where you have to acquire knowledge. It it needs uh, complete training. you have to have the competency of undertaking the problems and you have to have accumulative skills to do anything so all these completely together is called as uh, uh, together called as an entrepreneurship right so i have to open up uh, three important parameters three important things that could help you to become a great entrepreneur of all time right so i'm going to open up three important things i'm going to open up three important parameters which you have to focus on your life to become a successful entrepreneur so out of all uh, the most important thing is innovation innovation is uh, the most important thing because uh, like every entrepreneur is successful because of his innovation yeah there might be a lot of keys to get success there might be lot of the keys to get success but the most important key to get success is innovation every single innovation today began with just a spark of idea you people know that right every innovation today is just an idea once every idea has been implemented and that is called as an innovation today so business uh, without ideas uh, uh, cannot be considered as a business right so every business should have as have its unique idea so a business without idea you cannot call it as a business if if uh, there was no charles babbage i say uh, this meeting today online is not at all possible if there is no graham bell there is no mobile devices today if there is no thomas alva edison we would be used to can, uh, like have candle like dinners right so the world is changing because of innovation and uh, that is what i would like to say uh, even as students people might have lot of ideas in your brain all 499 participants here including me would have lot of ideas in our mind can you call those ideas as an innovation no never never you cannot call ideas are innovation ideas are called innovations only when it is implemented when you implement your idea only then you can call it as an innovation otherwise it is just an idea so idea plus in implementation is called as an innovation you can't call it as an innovation until it is implemented so either uh, it be a success or uh, say failure implement whatever we think or whatever ideas we have very is very important right so end of the day we have uh, only two results we have just two results whenever you implement something whenever you implement your ideas or whenever you implement your thoughts we just have two important results we just have two results either you win or you either you win or you come on when you implement something either you win it or please don't uh, call it as a failure uh, so whenever you you uh, implement something either you win or you learn please don't say that you have failed there is nothing called as failure in implementation every implementation will give you two results either you win or you learn there is nothing called as failure people uh, so end of the day uh, we have only two results you win or lose and when you implement 10 different ideas say you, you for example uh, any one of you are going to implement 10 uh, different ideas and could not get the results what you want or what you expected but you have found out something you have found out something yes you have found out that those 10 ideas won't work you have found out that even that is a learning isn't it a great learning you have found out that these 10 ideas won't work you will not use those 10 ideas again in your life that is a great learning which you have achieved so whenever you implement you either win or you learn something you won't get this learning uh, even if you go to go and sit in a library for the next one year 
So please go and sit in a library for one year. You won't get this learning. But this learning is possible only when you implement these things. So uh, yeah, failure. Yeah, uh, coming to the failure part. Failure is the best tuition master that could give you the best learning ever. So don't worry about your failures. Don't like get afraid of your fail failures. Don't hesitate to face failures. So as I said, failures are the best tuition masters who can give you the best learning ever, right? No professor in this room or no professor in this country or no, no uh, academician in this world can give you a best learning what a failure can give you, what a failure can teach you. So don't be afraid of failures. Stay happy and stay cool when you get failed because you have been learned something which no one is going to get you, right? Yeah, so uh, the point is, so never ever hesitate to implement whatever you think. If it's a failure, stay cool, stay calm. Let us not worry about the people who is going to call you as a failure. Don't worry about the people who is going to call you as a failure. They are just the spectators. They are just the audience. They are, they are not your life. They are not the people who is going to motivate you. So they are just the spectators. They usually, what they do is, they, they usually uh, love to pass comments on others' life. So they are the people who passes comments. They just pass comments. That's their only job. They don't have any other job. So don't, don't ever worry about, uh, about the people who are going to pass comments on you. Your reply for them is just your success. Your only reply should be your success. Kill them with your smile and bury them with your success, right? So I just have uh, one question for you people in this room. Your chat box is open again. Yes, I'm opening your chat box. I'm, I'm waiting for your answer. Yes, uh, your chat box is open. Come into your answers. What do you think the most important thing to start a business or, or to become an entrepreneur? What is the most important thing to start a business? Idea, idea. Okay, determination and to be persistent on it. Logic and perception, innovation, courage, risk. To be consistent. Wow, wow. A group of active participants. I've never seen such active participation in a, in any any room which is more than four hundred plus. Your your people are uh, awesome, mind blowing. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Great, 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 great. I'd I'd like to like uh, go with the answer. Not, no answers are wrong. No, nothing of your answers are wrong. But everything has its own perception. According to me, the most important thing to start a new business is very simple. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you an example of these real-time people. They are all emerging entrepreneurs today. All these people they belong to India and they are all emerging entrepreneurs today. And uh, but I could say a lot of entrepreneurs today have never invested money for their business. Maximum people would think that to, to start a business or to, so to become an entrepreneur, they need money. They need a principal amount, a capital amount to be invested. No, that is not the case here. Instead, they have invested two things, just two things in their life, time and grind. They have invested their time to work. They are dedicated towards their time. They are, they are, they are accountable for that, what they are going to do. And the second thing is they have invested their grind. They have invested their ideas. Whatever you are you're said in the chat box is exactly right. Ideas, brain, and time. These are the things which, you, which can make you a successful entrepreneur because this is the most expensive investment ever. Even if you invest a crore of your business, that is not going to be expensive. But investing your time and brain is highly expensive. If this is your investment, uh, my, my dear children, if this is your investment, you are in the right process. You are in the right process. And when you are right in the process, you don't want to worry about the result because you're already in the process. You're already in the track. So don't worry about the results and just keep pressing the accelerator, moving forward and, and trying to accomplish whatever you want. Yeah, fine. I would like to quote some uh, well-known case studies as an example. Uh, yeah, uh, so I have some case studies to say how people are bringing the business best out of their uh, control and uh, how they are like uh, giving some uh, innovative ideas to, uh, the, to their business, right? So uh, you might not be uh, well aware about this personality, Mr. Uh, K KR Nagarajan. He's a well-known personality in Tamil Nadu in my state here. He's a well-known personality and uh, a true living example. He's a living example. 
uh, that a small innovation can bring great results. I hope uh, most of you people know dhotis. You know dhotis, right? Uh, we call it as vestis in Tamil. And uh, but 90s kids and kids in 2000 era uh, will not prefer it because they do not feel comfortable wearing it. That's the only problem we have. Even even I love to wear it, but could not feel comfortable. This is the time where the dhotis were introduced with velcro where we can easily stick it around our waist. We can easily stick it. There is no, no problem in wearing it. We will be very comfortable because we are just going to stick it, right? So there is no increase in the production cost. There is no increase in production time. There is no much manual effort, but the customer acquisition went 25 lakhs from five lakhs in just three months. See, a small innovation in their business, a small innovation in their production, is bringing out a big result in their customer acquisition, which is the most important thing in a business. That is where innovation is going to stand in your business. See, we have a, we have a very good innovation process called as reverse osmosis, right? If there is no uh, innovation process like reverse osmosis, damn sure. And to be honest, I don't have water in my home today. I'm in a place, I'm in a remote place where there is no water, there is no underground water. And I'm, I'm drinking water only because there is a great innovation process called as reverse osmosis. So innovation is going to play a great role in your life, a great role as an entrepreneur's life, right? So um, the customer acquisition, as I told you, it went to 25 lakhs from 5 lakhs in just three months, right? And I'll go with the next living example. Yeah, you might have uh, heard about Mr. Uh, Sri Harsha. He's an entrepreneur, a young generation entrepreneur who founded a film called as uh, Bundle, B-U-N-D-L, Bundle. This is his this first company, a logistics-based uh, company uh, who can carry the products from one place to another. It is a logistics company, right? So, but he, he just implemented all his ideas, whatever he, he had in his mind, he just implemented that. But the sad part is, but the uh, worst part in this life uh, or in his uh, career is, it's an utter failure. Bundle is a big failure for him. He could not be successful in this business. Then uh, what Sri Harsha is known for actually? Sri Harsha is an entrepreneur. He founded a company called as Bundle, which is not a successful business. And why Sri Harsha is famous now? Yeah, your chat box is open people. Come on. Sri Harsha is an entrepreneur. He founded a company called as Bundle, but Bundle is an utter failure. But Sri Harsha is a well-known entrepreneur today. Why? How? Any, any guesses? I think you're on, uh, like, you're into uh, thinking mode. <laughs> That's great. You can unmute yourself also uh, to reply. Yeah, fine. So I'll, I'll go with the answer. It's because he is well known today in India. He is well known to the nation because of his new firm. He has started a one more firm, and that is called as Swiggy. He's the founder of Swiggy. He has applied all his learnings from his first failure and designed a new business model, which almost acquired everyone's mobile phone today. I'm sure maximum of you people would have used it at least once in your lifetime. So Swiggy is acquiring, is, is occupying your mobile memory at least once in your lifetime. And that is what Sri Harsha is known for. See, exactly, Bundle is a failure. And whatever learning he has got in that particular business, he's, he has applied all that strategies and theories in Swiggy. And now Swiggy is one of the most important uh, marketplace for hotels. Uh, he has no hotel. See, um, the most important thing is, uh, Sri Harsha, he has no hotel or he has no restaurant on his own, but every single restaurant is under his control today. Yes, he founded Spiggy. A kind of innovation is aggregating uh, the hotels and uh, delivering the foods to the customers from their favorite restaurant. That is the most important thing here. They are they're giving the food from their favorite restaurant and that's what he did. And now Spiggy is one of the most dominating food delivery firms in India. Yeah, now let's take an interesting case study of these two people. These two people, Mr. Bhavish Agarwal and uh, Mr. Ankit Bhati. 
you know who these two people are owner of ola i think uh, ruby has given me the right answer uh, he is the founder of swiggy has given the right answer yes i'll go with this uh, this point now uh, bhavish agarwal and uh, ankit bhati can you please guess who these two people are founders of ola yes exactly exactly great oh fine now let's take this uh, case study mr bhavish agarwal and uh, mr ankit bhati they are now the most hot spoken personalities because of their new innovation innovative solution uh, the, the interesting part is that this was their final year project college final year project got funded and now they almost control all the taxis in the nation ola ola the new trend of transporting service ola is the company which was founded by these two people and uh, the most interesting part is that is their final year project that was funded and that was now the most dominating transport services in the nation so see every single success what we see today what we see today is just a spark of idea and implementation so it's time for us to implement it's time for us to implement whatever we think to be something to be something that can give a solution for the human welfare so please don't just have idea within yourself start implementing your ideas do some innovations and that is where that is what an important parameter of entrepreneur right so never ever hesitate to whatever uh, uh, whatever ideas you have to implement be an innovator it's the right time to innovate so fortunately uh, we are all enjoying all the innovations of our ancestors whatever innovations uh, given by our ancestors we are enjoying it now it's our turn now it's our turn to innovate some new ideas and uh, let the future generation enjoy it so uh, i have a famous proverb i have seen uh, today's innovation is sorry today's tradition is once an innovation and uh, today's innovation will be tomorrow's tradition be an innovator this is the only hashtag you have to keep in your mind if you want to become an entrepreneur the main important parameter of an entrepreneur that is he should be an innovator only innovators can be very successful right so let us be an innovator and keep inspiring the new entrepreneurs uh, innovation is the primary thing uh, for a successful uh, what you call this entrepreneurship right so uh, let me uh, step into the next big thing which you could uh, uh, so uh, if you could help you to be more successful hope you know the differences between the below devices i'll go i'll go one by one yeah this is the basic uh, model nokia which was released 30 35 years ago three decades back uh, this was nokia and uh, yeah we had advanced model of devices where we had 2g internet we had mms uh, facilities we had bulk sms and we had some interesting games to play so this is the next uh, device uh, which has been introduced and uh, the evolution of mobile was we had our android devices we had ios devices we had 3g and 4g internet we had lot of uh, communication channels we had social media integrations here and we, we had our smart devices the mobile phone had become smart and now we are into an era where we have some folded devices we have some foldable phones uh, so the uh, so these are the four different devices a basic model which has been introduced uh, 25 to 30 years back on the next model where we started enjoying the features of uh, mobile devices and 2g internet and uh, next came into uh, the, the play the android devices uh, with 4g internet and where we can access oh, yeah. anything, anywhere uh, anytime and uh, and uh, even a single mobile device uh, it it replaced a camera it replaced a radio it replaced a cds usb and even sometimes laptops has been replaced by these devices and now uh, finally we have a specially designed foldable mobile phones uh, and uh, my question is is anyone in this room do you still use the first model of mobile phones now s yes or no your chat box is open are you still using the first device of mobile phone uh, the first version of your mobile phones no no is any one yes here i could see no no wow flooding answers no 
Yeah, hundred. Yeah, yes, I could see one. Yes, okay, interesting man. Great. Okay, at least the second one. Now, yeah, very few people. Yes, we have club dancers. Great. Uh, fine. Maybe the third model. Maybe the third model. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. Great, great, great. Yes, maximum of few people. Yeah. And the fourth model. Yeah, if it is affordable, I'll go with your answer. If it is affordable, you'll be going with the fourth model. But maximum of you people have updated your mobile device to a third model where you want to update yourself, right? Fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So every one of you would like to go with the advanced model to enjoy the recent features of the mobile, what we have today, right? That's not bad. That's not bad. Good to see the uh, enthusiasm, actually. That's really great. But hold on, hold on, hold on for a minute. I could see few people who have started, uh, who have started their career in, uh, yeah, you call it C programming, right? Okay. They have started their career in C programming. And we had uh, PHP uh, technology later. Uh, web development experts might have known this, right? And uh, yeah, we had uh, something called as Laravel, the advanced framework of PHP. And uh, now we are into a new tech stack called as uh, mean stack. And it still goes on. The, the list goes on like that. We have new technologies as, uh, developing every single day as open source software. But the student is still in C programming. He has not updated. He has no idea about updating his skills, getting to know the new technological stacks and be in the race. He has no idea about to be in the race. So that is the difference what we are we are in the competition for. So I could remember a company. I could remember a company in 2000s, uh, one decade back, say, or 20 years back. I, I know a company. I could remember a company. I don't want to mention the name here. It is one of the finest companies in South Tamil Nadu with a very decent client base and almost 125 employees are with them. Believe it or not, now the company is no more. Now the company is no more. They were fully into .NET uh, for developing desktop applications. They were completely working on a technology called as .NET. When, when uh, the, the, the technology like uh, cloud and web applications started bringing new revolution, obviously people, they, don't, they want their applications to be cloud-based and not a desktop app. So uh, the, the company was forced to, to move from uh, .NET to some, some new technological stack where they can survive. People started developing software with PHP and Java. .NET has nothing to do with that. It has no role in the play. The company had no proper vision uh, for updating with new set of employees or just train the existing employees with a new stack. They had no proper vision and they had no proper training. Slowly, the client base was collapsed. The client base was completely collapsed and their revenue dropped down. Their revenue completely dropped down. And uh, there is no new projects. There is no new clients. There is no, no revenue, no profit. And at last, the company was surrendered as per Indian uh, incorporation law, whatever you call it as, right? So this is a clear example. We need a source that we need to be updated. And that requires a hardcore lifelong learning skills. This is the second point which I have to emphasize, lifelong learning. So I said that I will open up three important things to become a successful entrepreneur. The first thing is innovation. And the second most important thing is lifelong learning. Next day, all people in this room, 453 participants, all you people are tested every single day. Your competitors are trying you to knock you out. They are trying to knock you out of the out of the competition every single minute. So it's your responsibility to be in the competition always. So have this lifelong learning passion in your life, right? It's uh, it's about like uh, say our passion towards uh, learning will will always keep you in the competition. You'll, you'll always be in the competition if you are in the learning process. Say, when you are in the right learning process, you'll feel young, even if you are 80 years old. But when you stop learning, 
you will feel very old at even uh, at the age of 20 okay hope uh, hope you know every question in the world uh, has an answer right every question in the world has an answer uh, but most of the people won't see uh, the suspense in the answer I, I repeat again every question in the world has an answer yes i accept i agree honestly but every answer has a suspense inside we people don't tend to see that right yes uh, as i said to you every question has an answer and every answer has a secret question inside find the question within the answer and start searching for the new answer start searching for the next answer and the process go on goes on so i i could give you an interesting uh, example as i as i have uh, shown you in the slide so hope you people know we have ip address for internet facilities right we have ip address and uh, there are two versions when i was doing my engineering in my college uh, my professor asked us uh, what are the two versions of ip address right and everyone shouted in the room ipv4 and ipv6 yeah there are these are the two answers which every single student gave and it was over the the, the professor appreciated everyone and the topic is over and we went into the new topic right okay fine but the right answer has been given to the question yes it is over but everyone was waiting for the next question but i could not i could not because i could see some interesting suspense in the answer i was thinking about it i was thinking about it so can you please find what is, what the suspense is can you say what is the suspense is your chat box is open see the two versions of ip addresses ipv4 and ipv6 the question has been given the right answer and it is over but i could see one suspense here one interesting suspense here exactly kabir kabir thanks for your answer the suspense is what happened to ipv5 exactly srishti bhavana yeah everyone has given the right answer what happened to ipv5 that is the suspense here i started looking for the answer i started looking for the answer 20 books 18 websites uh, 23 youtube videos and uh, and many more many more and finally i could find the answer right and finally i could find the answer but during the search the answer during the search of the answer uh, during the search of the answer i came to understand a lot about network technology and which i have never heard before even uh, i have attended more than uh, 125 lectures during my college days but i have found something new investigation process which i made to find the answer helped me to understand new things and there started my learning habit so that is there is where i started learning new things happily right so i found the new way how to learn and i thoroughly enjoyed it finding the answer for the question finding the hidden secret in the answer and searching for the next answer the process goes on like that so obviously the learning is not going to stop when you st when you start finding the suspense the learning is not going to stop it will keep on insisting you to explore new things every single day and now i am here in front of you as an entrepreneur this is what i have did this is how i have learned this is what the learning process i have i have followed so the same learning practice will give you a great learning exposure a lifelong learning practice which is the most important parameter to become an entrepreneur so keep in your mind that you have to be updated never get outdated lifelong learning is the most important skill right so uh, lifelong learning is actually uh, the core value of any successful personality in the world today in the galaxy today uh, just pinpoint any one example today any one any one successful entrepreneur one of their important parameter would be lifelong learning there is no second thought in it right okay and i'll go to the last parameter the last parameter what do you think will be the last parameter see again uh, your chat box is open no answer is going to be wrong no answer is going to be wrong uh, just your perception i have given you two important parameters to be successful entrepreneur one is innovation and the second one is uh, lifelong learning and what 
what could be the third important parameter according to my perception is yeah consistency great great meditation oh my god nice goes on okay I'll, I'll go with the process i'll go with them again uh, as i said to you there is no wrong answers in the room the answers are according to your perception and uh, according to my perception the most important skill is the leadership yeah uh, i would like to uh, like to uh, like uh, have a, have a small activity within you people uh can i have any one person who can unmute here and just introduce yourself come on any one you can uh, unmute and introduce yourself for just two minutes um dear participants uh, for the activity kindly i respect uh, i request you to please raise your hand so that we can unmute you from our end <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> i could see a lot of hands in the room yeah Yeah, okay, participants, yeah. you can unmute yourself. Yeah, Swapnika, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good afternoon, sorry. Hi. Yes, go ahead, Swapnika. Go ahead. so myself swapnika singh and i belongs to lucknow uh, which is also known as the city of nawabs and i have completed my 10 plus 2 from ran international school and i have completed my graduation from isabella thoban college lucknow and right now i'm pursuing um, uh, mba from galgotias university and um, other than this um um i am enthusiastic and my strengths are that my strengths are that i am a uh, good communicate uh, good i have a good communication skills and uh, other than this um, that's it that's fine that's fine thank you swapnika for initiating something because yeah, every every single activity should have a initiator when there is a initiator then there is no problem for the organizer <laughs> you made my job very simple uh, thank you swapnika for your initiating point and uh, yeah why, why don't we go with uh, shalini ashwiti for the next uh, presentation uh, come on uh, shalini you can unmute and uh, give your introduction for 2 minutes go ahead uh, good afternoon everyone so this is shalini avasti and uh, i'm also from lucknow and uh, i have completed my bachelor's in education i've also worked with an edtech company which is qmath currently i'm pursuing mba from galgotias i love uh, cooking and i'm very fond of chinese food i also write uh, like cre creating blogs and uh, i'm also into editing and writing content thank you everyone great great thank you so much shalini and uh, uh, we'll give chance to mr uh, jennifer das yeah good afternoon everyone good afternoon sir good afternoon my name is jennifer das and my ho hometown is lucknow and currently i'm residing in ghaziabad i have couple of hobbies such as reading books uh, also sports and singing dancing so they are so basically i'm it's like i can in every i'm fond of doing and creating and basically uh, evolving such things which uh, which i'm fond of and thirdly so uh, i did my graduation from galgotias university so uh, it was english honors and currently i'm pursuing uh, ba from galgotias university and my schooling was from st mary's convent school ghaziabad and uh, higher education from the ingram institute english school icsc so now uh, i am very fond of uh, facing the challenges so basically i did a lot of i faced a lot of challenges and currently uh, there are some of the there were so much of barriers in life and uh, i really like to face them uh, and learn from those barriers also uh, the that's all sir great great uh, jennifer it's nice to hear your introduction and i'm happy that you're fond of challenges 
Uh, yes, uh, the last chance can be given to uh, Mr. Harish Agarwal. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Harish Agarwal. Currently, I am pursuing BBA in Aviation Management. Currently, I am in second year, and I am. I want to build my own airline company as I am a, become a great entrepreneur. At I was sorry, entrepreneur. Great, great, Harish. Actually, sir, it's Harshal. Ah, uh, Harshal. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Harshal. Fine. Ah, uh, fine, Harshal. Thanks for your introduction. And ah, uh, yeah. Let Let me get into the activity part. Ah, uh, we had four introductions, right? We had uh, Swapnika. We had Shalini. Ah, uh, we had uh, Jennifer. And ah, uh, and finally, we had uh, Mr. Harshal. So we had four introductions. And ah, uh, let me consider all these people uh, as a team. So so uh, Shalini, Swapnika, Harshal, and ah. Uh, Jennifer, uh, you are a team now, right? And I want you people to select one leader among your team. Who can be a leader? You can either select or you can be a volunteer. Uh, if you are interested to be a leader of your team, just unmute yourself and say that yes, I'm ready to be a leader. I can be a leader, sir. Yes, sir. yes we can be a leader, sir. Uh, sorry, uh, just uh, give me your name and then please tell me that you can be a leader. Sir, Shalini, Jennifer. Shalini. Yeah, see, there is a competition to be a leader. That's that's real. This is really a healthy competition. That's what I'm expecting from you people. It's, really nice. it's okay, sir. We can vote and we can decide which one will be the leader. Are they here? Yeah. Okay. So, as per uh, your recommendation, uh, Shalini, I'll go with Jennifer as leader. Uh, Jennifer, can you please unmute? Yes, sir. Uh, Jennifer, now we are going to have a have a task, which is going to be the most toughest task in your life, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you know uh, Mr. Harshil, Swapnik, and Shalini before? No, sir. No. Uh, do you want to add any one of your friends or any one of your uh, one or two of your friends to this team now? um yes sir if they are having the capability i'll surely add them to the group come again sorry pardon sir now you are asking the names or you are just uh, saying yeah I, i'm considering i'm considering you as a leader of this group and you have three people in your team I, i'm giving you the permission or i'm giving you the privilege to add your friends to the group if you want any of your friends to be added to your team you can add them that's the permission which has been given to you now because okay, you are going to face a task you are going to just face a task uh, so you want your friends to be in the team right okay sir yes sir yeah okay. just, uh, just point out point out your friend who can be in your team who is in this room so ankita if she is here ankita, ankita are you there ankita ravi raj kamal Yeah, uh, let me go with Ankita. Ankita, you can please unmute you, and uh, uh, if you are okay with the participating in the task, just say yes, I'm interested, and join the team. Ankita, friend of Jennifer, are you there? So maybe she's not here. Sorry, Jennifer, she is not here. I'll go with the next participant, next friend of yours. So I'll uh, take the name of Rishita Sharma from Department of SOE. Okay, Department of SOE, Mr. Sharma, are you there? Rishita Sharma, please unmute. Sharma, please unmute. Are you there? Support your friend uh, Jennifer. She's she's looking for some good people to join the team. Join okay. your team, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Ravi is here. Yeah, Sandesh Kumar is ready. I think. Uh, Okay, thank you. Anyone? Anyone? Yes, Kamal. Uh, Ravi Raj Kamal is there, sir. Okay, yeah, Ravi Raj Kamal is here. Okay, uh, so we have uh, one more extra participant in this room. Oh, sorry, in this team. And uh, the thing is, um, uh, Jennifer, I am going to give you one of the toughest task which you have ever faced in life. You're going to face the toughest task. You are going to do it. Your team is going to do it. Exactly. Uh, to point out exactly, your team is going to accomplish the task. Okay. But I'm not going to give you what task it is now. I'm not going to explain the task now. Before that, 
I want you to select any one person from your team who can completely under, understand the task and accomplish the task in the next two, two days. I'll give you two days to accomplish it. I'll give you two days to like uh, work on the task and give me the result. But I want only one person from the team to be selected. It is going to be the toughest task in your life. Give me Excuse a me, good sir. participant from your team or good person from your team who can take the task with guts. Come on. Sir, so, um, I'll go, go with Ravi Raj Kamal. You'll go with Ravi Raj Kamal. Can you tell me why you have selected Ravi Raj Kamal instead of like other participants? Is there sir, any particular reason? Uh, actually, I'm sorry. If, uh, actually, I know personally Ravi Raj. So, and he is very laborious also. And the rest of the team leaders, I'm not personally aware of them. Uh, so uh, that's why the person whom I know, and I know his his capability, his, uh, you know, he is laborious and can complete the task. So that's why I'm taking the okay. name. Okay, nice to hear. But I just want to uh, tell you one more thing. And then you can say that whether you're going to stick with your decision or you're going to change, right? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Consider you people, uh, the, those, those five in your team are working in a company. You're, you're working in an organization as employees. And now this task has been given to you. If Ravi Raj Kamal is not able to complete the task on time or complete the task with whatever I, outcomes I'm expecting, he will be fired off. He'll be sacked from the company, right? That is the point here. This is the only condition or only uh, say the protocol which I'm going to give you to uh, take this task. Are you still sticking with your decision or you just want to change your decision? Is still Ravi Rajkumar is the competitor or, or the attendant or uh, uh, the person who is going to take the task? Or you have any, any dilemma in your decision now? So basically you are saying that if Ravi Raj uh, failed to perform that particular da task, then uh, I'll be just hiring him, uh, ju just firing him off or just giving the opportunity to the other, the, another person. Come again, I could not uh, get what, what you're exactly conveying. Come again, sir, please. Sir, the, uh, you said uh, that if the Raviraj Kamal is not able to perform that particular task, so I have yes. to uh, fire him or, and give the opportunity to another person. No. Uh, if Ravi Rajkamal is not able to complete the task, uh, he will be fired off from the company where he cannot be in the job anymore. He's completely fired off. He should resign his job and he should go anywhere else. So this is the point. No, sir. Sir, see, uh, we humans have uh, uh, are not perfect in each and everything. So mistakes are, I think, uh, they're a part of life. And if he'll be not able to perform that particular task, I'll be first guiding him and will give him the second chance. Uh, so uh, I will not fire him off from the job. Great. I'll give him one more chance. Okay. So, no, uh, Jennifer, uh, please understand the task very well. Uh, firing option is not in your hand. It is purely depends upon the management. It is not in your hand, right? So the condition is you have to accomplish the task with one member in your team, any one member in your team. And if you can't, that particular member will be sacked. That is the only thing we can do. Is that yes. clear now? Yes, sir. So basically, I'll be doing the task if that person won't be able to perform that task. So the okay, only option will be left for me is to perform my, um, myself. Okay. So uh, uh, the thing is here, when we have, uh, we have a task in our mind, when we have uh, a particular task in our mind and uh, say, uh, have given, I've said you two things. The first thing is the task is going to be the toughest task in your life. The second thing is if you are not able to complete the task, that particular person who's, who is appointed by you will be sacked off from the organization. And this is where your leadership role plays. This is where your responsibility plays. So as a leader, as a leader, leading position member in your team, you should be ready to take up the task yourself because you are the person who you want to protect your team. You are the person who want to take the responsibility of coming in front of your team and take whatever the task it is. And if it is not done, you should be the first person who should be suffered. It is not your team. So that is the main quality of a leader should possess. 
and that is the, where the leader stands in front. Okay, so I'm not going to give you any task. This is the task that's set off now, right? I'll go into the presentation again. So a leader should stand in front of anyone. A leader should present himself in front of the team and he should be the first person who should take any blame or any responsibility coming into the team. So here we go with the topic called as uh, leadership. I'll share my screen again. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, Sandesh, okay. if you have any query, you can ask. Sandesh. So what happened? Yeah. Uh, yeah yes, sir. Sandesh uh, is a uh, one to ask something, uh, sir. Yeah, please, please go ahead, Mr. Uh, Sandesh. Yeah, fine. I think he don't want to ask anything now. And uh, yeah, let's go with the leadership part. So your <clears throat> and the last parameter, what I said is to become a successful entrepreneur, it is your leadership. You might have heard a proverb. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you might have heard it. So a group of line headed by a sheep cannot win the battle. Even if it is a group of line, when it is headed by a sheep, they cannot win the battle. But a group of sheep, when headed by a line, can win any battle very easily. So that is the importance of leadership any team could have, right? So a, a leader is someone like you know uh, who can turn the vision into reality. Uh, he can con. Convert the, the, the dreams into actions and uh, and break the challenges with his team and his attitude, right? So it's it's quite easy to be a good leader. It's quite easy to be a good leader when you have said certain practices followed regularly, right? So the first thing is uh, be self motivated always. Be always uh, self motivated. Like uh, never expect uh, someone to be your motivator. Never depend on anyone to motivate you. So you should be self-motivated on now and never depend on others to initiate a work. So the one who depends on others to initiate something uh, will uh, never get it done in his lifetime. So so be interdependent. So be independent. Uh, never depend on others and have a self-motivated mindset. So uh, so having such a strong mindset. Uh, to accomplish things individually will help you to become a good leader and uh, obviously a good leader can become a good uh, entrepreneur right so the second point is uh, have a goal to achieve uh, so see uh, just think a person uh, who's standing in a football ground and uh, uh, he's having a ball and uh, we have 22 players in the ground i, I hope there are 11 players in a team and uh, we have 22 players in a ground and one football player he's having the ball and uh, consider uh, he is having a ball and with no goal post. There is no goal post in the ground. What will he do for the next 90 minutes with the ball? He is having the ball, but there is no goal post. What is going to do for the next 90 minutes? Will he have the enthusiasm to achieve something? Will he have that fire to do something? No. Will he run towards what he want? No. There is no any motivational factor where he can run towards a work without a goal will not have a motivating factor and the process will not be much effective, right? So when you have a goal, when you have a strong mindset to achieve something, either it can be a short-term goal or a long-term goal, whatever it is. So when you have a goal and you have a strong desire to achieve it, run for it, chase it, and you can finally get it, right? So feel the taste of success, then you will never miss it in your, in your life. So until then, you, you will have that hesitation to participate. But when you start participating and when you start running towards it, when you start chasing it and when you get it and finally when you taste the success, you will never leave it. When you will never leave achieve without achieving the goals. So that is more important to be a leader. Have a goal. Drive yourself to achieve the goal and also drive your team to achieve the goal. It's not that a leader can drive himself alone. So a, a person who is going to drive himself alone, who is going to self-motivate uh, himself alone, cannot achieve uh, his passion or cannot, cannot accomplish what he has to do, cannot pursue his uh, dreams. He has to motivate himself and also along with the team so that he can achieve what he wants, right? And uh, the third more important point is emphasize more on actions than words. Mere talking is very easy, you know? Talking is very easy. Doing it is really hard, 
and uh, uh, doing it successfully is really really hard so emphasize on actions than words implement whatever you wish to do so i have pointed out already uh, whatever you are going to implement there are only two two results either you are going to win it or you are going to learn something out of it that's all there is nothing called as failure in your life there is nothing called as losing uh, there is nothing to worry about the people who is going to comment on your life because i have already said that those people do, they don't have any your team what do you want to convey to your uh, employees whatever it is your words and your way of conveying it should be should give a clear picture about the context so there should not be any mind map there should not be any 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 document to be submitted all things should be done only with your words only with the way in which you are going to convey it and most importantly you know communication should be persona based it should be empathy based your your words or your actions or your your sentence your vocabulary it means that the way you speak the words you use should purely depend upon the audience never quote something which cannot be understood by a group of people if you are addressing to a group of people uh, in a first standard of school or second standard of school don't quote the example of elon musk they cannot understand it right so the, your your words and your context should purely depend upon the audience right and uh, your words and emotions should reflect your thoughts your thoughts or your your actions or your thoughts should be reflected by your words so that any team any kind of audience can easily understand it and they can easily keep on the track right and the last and most important thing uh, to be a leader is never hesitate just participate whatever chance you get whatever forum you get never hesitate to participate right just participate no one is going to give you a chance every single day say uh, when i gave chance uh, uh, to to introduce yourself i, I got four to five hands initially say shalini uh, and uh, yeah, jennifer uh, uh, harshal they, they they were eager to speak but are you sure you are going to get every single ch every uh, chance in every single meeting you are going to uh, participate no you might not get this chance again in in your lifetime even so whenever you are going to get a chance get it done get it done in your life so that uh, you can you can like enroll yourself in some activity so that you are going to practice your uh, your regular skills it's your role it's your responsibility to take up the chances whenever you get it like what you people did today right if not if you are not going to take the chances if you are going to just be a spectator if you are just going to become an audience one fine day all your chances would have faded up all your chances would have ended up and you will be out of competition so one day you won't get any chance all your chances have lost all your chances have missed and you will be out of the competition and uh, you can just be a spectator in rest of your life i don't want you participants all 430 of you participants to be in such a place where you are going to be out of the competition i want every single participant to be in the competition so that you don't want to hesitate please don't hesitate to participate in whatever chance you are going to get so just participate even if it is a lemon and spoon race right let people laugh if you fail just think that they don't have any other better job let them laugh let them laugh on your actions but you don't worry about it that's why they are laughing because they don't have any other job that's why they are laughing at you keep moving and be on track always right leadership is not just a role leadership is a role model right so keep inspiring people as a great leader entrepreneurs are the biggest responsible people in the society today they are they are just one step ahead above all the people so entrepreneurs have a very big responsibility in the society and the world is believing that 
entrepreneurs can make a better tomorrow so it's again your responsibility because you are people who are going to become the next entrepreneur you are the people who are going to become the next business leaders and you are the people who is going to change the world the world is looking forward for great entrepreneurs like you all the participants here so keep inspiring people as a great leader becoming an entrepreneur is very easy please please note that becoming an entrepreneur is very easy but being an entrepreneur and lifetime entrepreneur surviving in this global competition is really challenging indeed right so you can you can easily become an entrepreneur that is not that is not at all a problem here every single one of you can easily become an entrepreneur just in a way innovation and implementation can can you can call yourself as an entrepreneur but see to that surviving in this global competition surviving in this world as an entrepreneur is really tough you cannot survive without your your lifelong learning skills your leadership skills and your your innovative skills without these skills you cannot survive as an entrepreneur and you cannot be in the competition lifelong so uh, my best wishes for all the great minds uh, in this room and uh, thank you for the patience and uh, the participation for last one and a half hours and i know how hard it is uh, to sit in my lecture for the next for 90 minutes and you people really did it when you can do this when you can sit in my lecture for 90 minutes you can also do other miracles like what you did today right so uh, thanks uh, for the great opportunity uh, we went to me for uh, addressing uh, this great crowd here it has been a really a nice time with the, all of you participants here your your participation is really awesome that's the most inspiring thing today uh, that is not uh, my presentation or whatever uh, whatever the organizing team has done it's really the participation from your side is really awesome it's really inspiring i could not see a full of energetic room other than this in my lifetime i think so i suppose uh, i have been to a lot of conferences i have been to a lot of uh, seminars but i have never seen such a active participant group in, uh, as as you did today so uh, thanks for that thanks for uh, making me very comfortable during this session and uh, yeah and uh, main uh, the motto of uh, thanking the organizing team uh, for the great opportunity it's my uh, honor to be a part of this workshop uh, thank you once again let's let's rock the world jai hind thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much sir for uh, addressing our participants and making this uh, lecture so enthusiastically energetic along with that the uh, uh, making engaging our participants into the direct conversation with you and as you have correctly pointed out sir yes it was actually a uh, the participants who make an event a success and uh, by seeing the enthusiastic uh, responses of our participants here today i can assure you that yes the participants present here today will actually love to be or will be highly motivated to be entrepreneurs in themselves and will be able to develop an attitude towards the same and uh, uh, with your kind words i request dr gorov if he is here in the meeting yes he is here uh, i request dr gorov to kindly felicitate our guest today okay thank you sir thank you so much for accepting the invitation and such a wonderful and informative session so please accept our gratitude of love from the galgotia university iic family thank you sir thank you so much for the invitation it's really uh, been a great honor uh, like uh, being your part of this uh, wonderful workshop along with you people as i told you before uh, this is a great energetic team you have with you and uh, hope every single one of the participants here will be successful in their life and uh, my best wishes for the organizing team and uh, the all the participants here thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much sir and we would hope that uh, once the covid subsides we will be happy we will have the opportunity to host you here in the university at the from ic yeah thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much sir uh the thank you participants you. I... <laughs> thank you sir thanks for the great dear time thank you thank you sir dear participants i humbly request all of you to kindly fill in the feedback, feedback form, form. 
the feedback form link has already been shared with you we are once again sharing the same the feedback link for both the sessions is same same so i request you to please submit the link it will be open for the next 20 to 25 minutes after that we will be closing the feedback link the certificates will be generated on behalf of the feedback responses received from the feedback link so i uh, i request you all to kindly fill in your correct entries especially your name so that the same will be used for the issuing of the certificate also i would like to thank dr gaurav also for his kind support during the entire session and organizing this event thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you sir with this dear participants we would like to end today's session and we hope to see you all again in our next upcoming sessions and in person or online however the mood will suit us thank you so much for your kind patience and presence and enthusiastic responses towards our guest questions thank you all jai hind jai bharat